Thank you for tuning in to our second installment of the Age of Android in the Enterprise, our three-part webinar series. Uh, in, this, in installment one, you heard from Kevin Lalek as he explained what's driving the migration to Android and the risks of staying on a legacy operating system. If you did not get a chance to watch that video, you can click on the handouts uh, tab on the console and download our series flyer. And from there, you can just click the register now button and replay Kevin's webinar. So before I introduce our next speaker, I just want to make you aware that you can ask questions throughout the entire webinar using the questions box on the console. If we have time, we will answer those questions live, but if not, we will respond back to you through email. Um, today we are joined by Mark Wheeler. He's our Director of Supply Chain Solutions for the Manufacturing Industry, and Mark is going to talk to us today about modernizing the warehouse with Android. So Mark, floor is yours. Thank you, Amanda. I want to thank everybody for joining us today uh, as we get into the second installment of the uh, Modernizing Your Warehouse with Android series. And as Amanda said, during the, the first session, Kevin did a great job of reviewing some of the IT-driven uh, motivators behind this industry-wide move um, to Android, uh, founded on the basic uh, reality that the uh, uh, the um, even extended support for Windows Mobile, Windows CE is coming to an end, and the security concerns and support concerns that that carries along with it. And uh, in response to that, Zebra's lifeguard uh, offering, providing guaranteed support and security updates over the enterprise uh, life of devices in the warehouse, and the expansion now of the Zebra portfolio uh, with Android to, to include really all of the use cases within the warehouse. So we have a consistent platform across wearable, handheld, and vehicle mount across the board. So that standardization, uh, along with the software tools that come with that, provide uh, a single platform that can be very effectively uh, deployed and managed <coughs> uh, within the enterprise. So those those issues are really important uh, and, and are are driving this transition. What we want to do today is focus a little bit more on the operations side of the equation and understand what this transition means to the warehouse uh, operations out on the floor. And to kind of kick things off, I want to share a quick poll and ask you to respond to it. Um, and what we're going to do is we're just going to ask, uh, from, from an operations standpoint, what is the... Uh, What's the perspective of your operations team right now? And if you could respond, are they are they kind of oblivious to this? They're unaware that this transition is taking place. They're aware of it, but it's not really uh, central or top of mind. Or is this something that they're actively engaged with uh, uh, in uh, in making it happen? And the results are coming in. I'm going to go ahead and close that and share the results with you. So it's a pretty even split, I would say, uh, uh, between the three categories with the, the most common or the most popular response they're aware but not really actively engaged. So I'm going to make the argument today as we go through our discussion um, that they should be actively engaged, that operations has a significant stake in making this happen, making it happen quickly, and uh, and doing it in a way that meets their needs in the optimum way. So when you look at warehouse in general, the market in general, we're at a time of of tremendous amount of change and dynamism in the marketplace. So this is these are some of the findings from our future fulfillment vision study that we published earlier this year, showing that about uh, nine out of ten companies expect that they need to. Uh, tighten up their delivery windows, deliver more quickly. In fact, nearly eight out of 10 expecting to ship, uh, either are already are or, or expect to have to ship on the same day. They expect in general to, to ship higher volumes with more SKUs and do all of that with higher inventory turns. And those are, those are significant challenges. And in response to that, we see companies taking a fresh look at their distribution networks, uh, their they're reassessing the location and mission of warehouses, in many cases, positioning inventory closer to demand if they're in retail and direct fulfillment. Uh, there, this, of course, creates new operating requirements for the warehouses, new operating profiles, 
old material handling systems that used to do the job and do it very well are sometimes now not really adequate in terms of uh, moving product through the operation fast enough. So they're looking at new techniques, new workflows, and new technology. So there's a real premium on flexibility in, uh, in the warehouse. So as we look inside the four walls, what we see are uh, uh, higher volumes. We see a, uh, a move towards smaller pack levels as we're shipping more pieces uh, rather than full cases, more cases rather than full pallets. We see a, a, an environment that's less tolerant than ever of errors, whether those are inventory errors or, uh, or shipment errors. So we want to be able to error proof from wall to wall. We know with the rise in e-commerce volume, we see more returns. So reverse logistics becomes a more important part of the process. And we've got to be able to deal in, uh, uh, succeed in a labor market that's tighter than ever. More temp workers, generally more turnover in the workers. So it's very important that we get those workers on board. We make them productive. Uh, we make them effective uh, as quickly as possible. And yet, on the technology side, what we see is that the warehouse and material handling market, so I think warehouse uh, plant operations, in some cases back of store retail, are actually lagging other areas of the business, like the retail floor, healthcare, or field mobility, in terms of the move to Android. And there's some, some good reasons for that. One of them is the standardization on Telnet as the mobile client. And Telnet, or terminal emulation, has served this market really well uh, for about 30 years since real-time warehouse management systems came into being, and uh, the terminals, terminal emulation uh, protocols themselves actually date back even farther than that. But it's, it's, it's had some real benefits. So uh, it's, we've had this uh, standard mobile client that's enabled the, the warehouse management system uh, application developers to assume that uh, this universal client would be out there uh, to have flexibility in, in the hardware choice. It's, a, it's allowed Zebra, for example, to preload the, the Wavelink and now Avanti terminal emulation product on all of our warehouse products. It's something that we've been doing for um, a number of years. <clears throat> it's provided performance in terms of response time, really uh, you know, very low uh, demand on the network, low network latency, session persistence during a battery change or even uh, 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 during a device change. So, and it's been a very consistent part of the warehouse space for, for a long time. So you can understand why there's some reticence to, to move beyond that. But we do have to move beyond it <clears throat> uh, for a number of reasons that, that we mentioned already. Part of it is that there are limitations to this interface. So it's character-based, which means it's uh, the, the data that it presents is generally characters. And in that data presentation, it's really hard to zero in on the critical data of a particular transaction. And the data input is based on characters. It's based on keystrokes. So if that terminal emulation uh, it has the IBM heritage, 5250, 3270, it's going to be function keys for the most part. If it has a Unix heritage, it's going to be control key sequences. But that is something that is you know, obviously not optimum in terms of productivity, but it's increasingly foreign to the new workers that are coming into a workplace that have probably never seen a user interface like that and maybe never seen a, uh, a full physical keyboard. So all of that happening in a, a labor market that is as tight as it's ever been. Um, we see rising cost and limited availability to labor. Part of that, you know, as we see, um, the warehouse operators, particularly in the e-commerce and retail space, co-locating warehouse to, because they have the same uh, service objectives and same logistics realities in a particular market. So they end up competing for this labor. And these new employees are, are not familiar with, uh, with this type of technology. So we need to find ways to make them uh, productive. So why should operations really care about um, how this is done and utilizing touch devices. <clears throat> well, we know that when competing for labor, these mobility tools really matter to the employee. Uh, it's something that they're going to be using all day long, every day, um, and they're going to be more productive with the right tools. Um, from an initial onboarding perspective, we know that we can save up to 40 hours in onboarding trading time. That's literally hundreds of dollars of savings for every time a new employee comes on board. And as I said, turnover, employee turnover, temporary workers coming and going, that's a reality in the warehouse market today. More importantly, 
uh, we're able to leverage new and touch optimized form factors of devices that are proven to be more productive than their key based or gun form factor uh, uh, cohorts or predecessors. In fact, some of our testing with the TC8000 in particular has shown upwards of uh, high double digit, I would say, I think more precisely a 14% uh, productivity gain in scan intensive applications. You might see that on the receiving dock or, or replenishment or in, uh, in uh, order selection. So, uh, you know, getting this right, I would say, is is critical to uh, to uh, to the operations team. <clears throat> so, do I first question do do I need to migrate uh, or does migrating to Android require me to optimize the user interface? Can I keep the legacy interface? And the answer is no. You don't have to change the user experience. We are going to continue to provide key based. Uh, key optimized, I would say, handheld uh, devices, and uh, the user does not have to, be, have to be impacted in any way in terms of their experience with the move to the new operating system. But it does enable uh, a more sophisticated uh, uh, user experience or a touch optimized user experience. And you can do so even, on, I think the MC3300 is, is a very nice uh, option right now in the market because it has a large Capacitive touch uh, touch screen, and you could uh, you know start out with uh, the full key Telnet interface and optimize to more of a touch oriented user interface over time. In fact, run them side by side on the uh, on the warehouse floor. But to go beyond that, if you look at some of your options. I mean, what are your options for moving? Um, uh, for really optimizing the user experience as we move to Android. Well, one question is, uh, you know, what is the uh, 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 offering or the roadmap for the for the WMS provider? And in fact, I think what I'd like to do now is share a second poll about that and get your your input on that. So this one is going to ask a little bit about. Uh, your WMS provider, and you know what is their their strategy for the mobile edge? Do they have a defined uh, uh, Android client, native Android client that's available today? Do they have a plan to offer one, uh, or no plans, or simply don't know? So we're getting a lot of good responses. A lot of uh, a lot of don't knows. And let me go ahead and I think close that out and share that. So we looked at the don't knows are leading this. And I, I would suggest that that's a, that's a, a question that you, you need to know the answer to. Um, it's important to understand what their roadmap is going to be. We know that uh, uh, different WMS providers are, are at different stages in uh, getting this out to the market. Manhattan Touch Warehouse, for example, is available from Manhattan for their uh, um, WMOS or Open Systems Offering. <clears throat> um, most of the other providers are in some stage of delivering native support. So the next question is, if you know, if if it's not available today, or if it's available on a version that perhaps you haven't implemented, because it may be very likely that uh, if an upgrade would be required from the from the WMS supplier, and you may not be in a position to do that for a number of years, can you afford to wait? I would argue, based on all the things that we've already talked about, that you really can't afford to wait, and you don't have to wait. There are very good tools available from uh, uh, from Zebra and All Touch TE that's enabled by uh, uh, Avanti's Velocity offering, and from Staylink that can allow you to implement touch optimized devices with the legacy backend, with the Telnet backend, and yet provide a touch optimized experience for the for the workers on the floor and want to you know, differentiate a little bit between simply migrating to a touch optimized device where the data presentation is largely going to still be green screen telnet <clears throat> but we're going to be able to leverage soft keyboards soft input panels for data entry from a fully optimized user experience so when you look at for example um, just migrating, uh, Avanti uh, 
Velocity and Zebra's All Touch TE came out with version two earlier this year, and that continues to be updated and improved. And they have taken uh, the migration offering and, and pretty much automated that. So you can pretty quickly get to a migrated user interface for, for the Telnet backend and go live um, and be able to, to function and, and use the, uh, the touch optimized devices and use soft input panels um, with those devices. And beyond that, as we look at, at real uh, optimization of the UI, so the data presentation and the data capture, truly optimized for full touch, uh, we know the 2.0 product has made great leaps there as well. They have templates defined for the, the leading warehouse management system providers. And these templates, uh, you can select one, whether for, for a particular WMS or ERP package, and it will automatically do the vast majority of the modernization for you. And then you can go in and kind of uh, 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 do some fine-tuning of the data presentation and the data capture on a screen-by-screen -screen basis. And then these tools are going to run in, in the device at the mobile edge. The WMS in this situation is going to still be interacting with Telnet sessions. No change at all to the WMS. No change to the network traffic, really, uh, either, because we still have Telnet transactions going back and forth. And yet the user will experience uh, you know, a high-quality uh, touch user interface. Okay, so I'm going to kind of move beyond uh, just enabling the, the Telnet transaction here and, and talk a little bit about what else does Android bring to warehouse operations beyond simply a touch UI or a touch optimized device that I can use on my, my legacy warehouse management system solution. And some of them are, are indicated here as we look at the TC8000, the WT6000, <clears throat> the ability to... Um, capture images with the forward-facing camera on the TC8000. We see that a lot in inbound receiving, uh, very often where you, if you have damage in transit or a short or an overage, you want to be able to document that quickly and easily. But really anywhere in the enterprise, within the four walls of the warehouse, there, there are need, various requirements to capture images and communicate those out. Obviously, also for displaying images, Android does, uh, makes it much easier to integrate image presentation into the workflow. Lots of reasons you might want to do that. From a voice-directed standpoint, these devices have a lot of processing power and memory resources that these applications need. And with Bluetooth 4.0, we have a very high-quality wireless headset experience to support voice, and they're smaller overall for wearability. Uh, beyond that, all of the, the newer Android devices can sense uh, BTLE or Bluetooth Low Energy Beacons. And this is an exciting technology that allows you to create location-aware solutions out on the warehouse floor. Lots and lots and different uh, uh, ways to, to uh, leverage that. <clears throat> uh, along with that, when we talk about moving to Android, uh, we talk a lot about Zebra's mobility DNA offerings. And here's a list of them. Um, continues to grow both in functionality and in number. And these are critical both from an IT and an operations standpoint to understand what's available here. Because as an IT team, we are looking to uh, create rich solutions for your end user community. You're looking to deploy those, manage those effectively, uh, secure them. There are tools here that are enabling you to do that very productively. And from a you know, end user operation standpoint, there are applications here that can make you significantly more effective and productive on the warehouse floor. We talked about All Touch TE, which is based on Ivanti's velocity. There's a couple more I just want to touch on here. So this is Simulscan. This is a tool that uh, enables you to capture a large number of barcodes potentially at one time, all kinds of techniques for uh, filtering out the, the data and feeding that data up to the application. So if I have 100 barcodes to scan, um, you know, I, can, I can do that with a single, single trigger pull in many cases, or I can configure templates to capture different types of information at one time. So I want to share a quick video with um, uh, just a, I think it's just a minute or two, highlighting one of the use cases for uh, for Simulscan. 
great about Simulscan is it gives you the ability to capture a lot of information in less time than it would take you to capture even one barcode. I always tell customers that even if you're only looking to grab one single barcode on a label, using Simulscan will always save you money or and time. Um, but one of the benefits too is that it can help you to identify certain boxes, part numbers, um, in the event of a recall as an example. So let's say I have a recall and I'm looking for a product with a date code of May 6th. I can simply create a template and deploy it with Stage Now or my MDM. And instead of a worker having to manually look where everything is, Simulscan will simply stop when it sees May 6th in the date. You've got serialized product uh, anywhere in that supply chain. You've got uh, uh, tremendous data capture needs in, uh, in that area. In perishable uh, items where we want to capture lot numbers and track them for track and trace, even in uh, transportation uh, production operations where we have serialized parts and we need to track that, we need to do more and more scanning at inbound, at outbound, and all, all the way in between. So uh, Simulscan is finding a home in, in uh, more and more of those operations. Another great uh, mobility DNA application that uh, to be aware of is Workforce Connect. So leveraging the, the device that's already in the operator's hands to, get to, to um, improve communications with that person is, is something that has taken off with Workforce Connect in a lot of other operating area, area, uh, areas. We've seen it in the retail store, we've seen it in healthcare, we've seen it in plant operations. And I think it's time to see that uh, take off in the warehouse itself. Uh, it's a very robust application that can uh, do push to talk. We have networks now that can bear the uh, bandwidth uh, necessary to communicate voice. We have warehouses that on average are getting larger and larger, uh, you know, more million square foot DCs going up than ever before. We can't afford you know, management by walking around when you get to large DCs like that. So we're probably using voice today, perhaps in another way, per perhaps using the, 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 the uh, public address system um, or individual cell phones or radio systems, and yet our supervisors and our, and our end users, our task workers, have devices now in their hands with, with Android that can um, uh, execute push-to-talk and other messaging uh, applications, including up to full telephony through Workforce Connect. So um, that is another application I think uh, you know everybody should be aware of and be looking to leverage that out in the DC. So uh, we're going to we're uh, going to wrap up our conversation here by sharing another quick video. This one kind of sums up everything that I think we've talked about today with the value uh, that that Android can bring not just to the IT world but to the operation side on the warehouse. Legacy mobile operating systems and green screen applications were developed before e-commerce existed and can't handle today's order volume, delivery times, or security threats. Meet today's demands and prepare for the future. Modernize with Zebra Android devices. Android's familiar interface is fast and easy to use. Workers can get up to speed in hours versus days. Slow, unfamiliar interfaces and cumbersome navigation cost valuable time. With all-touch terminal emulation, you can use green screen right out of the box while you modernize your app for Android. New Android touchscreen devices help your operations work at full speed with capabilities like capturing multiple barcodes in one scan and camera technology that lets you capture condition of returns while putting augmented reality within reach. Zebra Android devices are built rugged and have features to keep workers productive and devices operating like fast charging, hot swap batteries, and instant push-to-talk communications. And with Mobility DNA, app development and deployment are simplified while maintaining operating system security throughout the life cycle of your devices. Zebra Android devices provide new opportunities to improve the performance of your warehouse. The time to seize them is now. Let's talk about the possibilities.
All right. So I want to thank Mark for for speaking to us today all about modernizing the warehouse with Android. Uh, so you might be wondering, okay, I, I understand why I need to make this move, but you know, do I have any resources? Where can I go to really learn more about how to get started? So for joining this webinar, we're um, giving you the first look at our uh, resource center where we have lots of information around modernizing the warehouse, uh, things to consider, frequently asked questions. So if you look in the handout section of the console, you'll see a flyer you can download um, and you'll be able to click that URL, but we'll also be emailing out this presentation and the replay so that you're able to check out this website um, after the call. Uh, but while I have you on, I'll just give you one really quick preview so you can see um, there's some industry insights here. You have a, a video by our very own Mark Wheeler who's been speaking to us today with some frequently asked questions. And then you can navigate the top uh, where there's different videos and how-tos on all the steps to take uh, and, and to learn uh, when you're trying to or starting out this migration to Android. So you'll be able to, to look through that, like I said, if you check the handout piece there. And then I wanted to then highlight our third installment and our final installment, installment of the Agent of Android in the Enterprise webinar series. This is going to be on November 14th. It's going to be hosted by Ritesh Gupta from our Learning uh, Services organization, and he's going to give you a lot of information around just how to start the deployment of Android in the enterprise. And like I said, if you go into the handout section and you click on the PDF we have there, you'll be able to register for that webcast. But again, we will be sending out an email to everyone who attended, so you'll be able to register through that email as well. Uh, so we have about three minutes left. I'm going to take a look and see if any questions came in, uh, but if you have any at the moment, please feel free uh, to feel free to send those in. So I'm just looking through here. Which devices support Bluetooth Low Energy? Yeah, so it's Mark. So um, all of the current Android devices are going to be able to sense those Bluetooth beacons, and then we can we have applications that can make sense out of that data. All right, thank you. Uh, so we still have a few more, uh, another minute or two left if anybody has a question that they want to enter. I'm just looking through here. Uh, here's one question, Mark. When is the last Microsoft update? I'm not sure. <laughs> well, I think, I mean, I think from what we've saw is that Microsoft has extended their extended support for Windows Mobile to 2020 and CE7 was extended out until 2021. So that's the last date that you'll be able to get support from Microsoft. Um, I do believe that they're evaluating, like depending on if there is any kind of um, security risks, they're evaluating whether or not they put a security patch out for it. So there's no guarantee that any kind of update will come out. It's really up to Microsoft on those pieces. So just looking through here, is the Avanti application able to be updated to use with Android devices? Yes. Yes, the answer is yes on that. <laughs> we actually have uh, Avanti's Velocity client, um, which Mark had spoke about, their rapid migration. So they definitely have everything ready so that you can start to um, use their application on Android devices. Let me see. We have one minute left. Um, We've got a couple questions coming in here. We have the MC9090. Is the TC8000 as durable as the MC9090? Yeah, the, the drop spec on the TC8000 actually exceeds the MC9090 uh, in, in certain aspects. So it is as rugged. And your users will appreciate the, uh, the ergonomics of it, the size, the weight, and the way it feels in the hand. All right, so I'm just looking at the time. It looks like we are right at time, but we do have a number of questions that came in, um, but don't worry, we are gonna respond to each one of you individually um, after this via email. So with that, I wanted to again thank Mark for giving us this great presentation and thank you everyone for taking time out of your day. We know everybody's busy and we appreciate that you took some time out to learn about how to modernize your warehouse with Android with Zebra. So thank you and we will see you on November 14th.